work based on the National Curriculum Level Descriptors for Shape and Space. To know an angle on a straight line, full turn and a triangle. So if we draw a straight line and put any, a point anywhere along there to appreciate that the angle round there is 180 degrees. In other words, if I start from there and I turn round to there, 180 degrees. And one full turn, so in other words, if we start pointing north or in any direction, come to that, and we go all the way around. One complete revolution is 360 degrees. And if we have a triangle, any sort of a triangle, that means as long as it's got three straight sides, it's a triangle. Appreciate that the angles added up will always come to 180 degrees. So that's all that is. Simple three pieces of information. The angle of straight line is 180 degrees. One complete revolution or full turn is 360 degrees. And the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. To be able to estimate angles. So let's estimate these angles. Now we should be able to see and appreciate 90 degrees, a right angle. So if we use that our basis of thought, if we put that on top of there and think down there, well if that's 90, that would be halfway, which would be about 45. So I would say that's around 60 degrees. So always think to yourself, what's 90 like? Put your 90 with the angle you're trying to estimate, and I would say that's chopped it in half about 45 degrees. Now if the angle hasn't got one of the sides going horizontally you could always turn the paper around because you'd be surprised how much difference that makes. You don't have to. So now if we drew our 90 degrees down there like that I would say that's about halfway which is 45 so I'd say that's about 30 degrees. An estimate doesn't have to be spot on. Let's look at this last one. What's this angle in here? Now again, you don't need to move the paper if you don't want to, but it does actually make a surprising difference if the one of the lines is going horizontal. Then you can think to yourself, well that's 90 degrees, so it's more than 90. I'd say that's about 20 more than 90, so I'd say it's about 110. So estimating, having a reasonable guess at angles, using your 90 as a sort of helper. Perimeter and area of rectangles. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of any shape. In other words, if I start there and go round the shape, doesn't matter which way I go round, how far is it? So in this case it's 6 plus 8 plus 6 plus 8. So that's going to be 14 and 14 which is 28. Another way of doing it is actually saying 2 of the 8 plus 2 of the 6. So perimeter is distance around the outside. The area of a rectangle is the length multiplied by the width or you can do it around the other way if you like so in this case that's 8 times 6 which is 48 now the only thing I haven't done with either of my answers is put in what we call the units that's centimeters because that's length and that's centimetres squared, or square centimetres, which is area. You should always put in the units with your number answer.
Now we're going to look at something called order of rotation. State the order of rotation of these diagrams. So looking at this rectangle, we stick a pin in the middle and we trace this rectangle. If we turn it through half a turn it will fit perfectly in that same space. If we rotate it through a whole revolution it will fit in that space again. So there are two angles, 180 and 360 degrees, that you can turn that so it will fit in its perfect space that it's in at the moment. So that's got a rotation of order 2. Now a square, if you rotate that about the centre, if you rotate a quarter of a turn it will fit in its own space. If you rotate it half a turn it will fit in its own space. Or if you rotate it three quarters of a turn it will fit in its own space. Or if you turn it all the way round. So we call that a rotation of order 4. Now an equilateral triangle, that's a triangle where the three sides are the same length. If you rotate that a third of a turn it will fit in its own space. Two thirds of a turn it will fit in its own space or all the way round. So that's got a rotation of order three. Now something like this. The only way you can make that fit in its own space if you rotate about the centre is to turn it all the way round. And if the only way you can do it is to turn it all the way round, we say it's got no rotational symmetry. To have rotational symmetry, it must have all the way round and at least one other angle. For example, back to the rectangle, it's 360 degrees and 180 will fit in its own space. A square is 90 degrees, or 180 degrees, or 270 degrees, or 360 degrees. But if it's only 360 degrees, then it's got no rotational symmetry. Now these two shapes have both got six sides. They're both hexagons. If it's like this, you could rotate it half the way round, in other words 180 degrees, and it fit in its original space. Or all the way round, 360 degrees. So this has got rotational symmetry of order 2. But this one, where all these angles are the same, and all the sides are the same length, there are in fact six ways you could rotate that and fit in its own space. This, 4, this, to this is 2 because you could rotate it halfway round it would fit in the same space or all the way round that's called order of rotational symmetry remember if you can only do it through 360 degrees a complete revolution if it's the only way you can make it fit in its original space then we say it's got no rotational symmetry Now let's look at reflection. To reflect in the x or y axis, here's the x axis, so we better label that. Here's the y axis, so let's label that. Reflect A in the x axis. So reflect this at A in the x axis, this point will end up here, this point will end up here, this point will end up here and the whole shape will end up looking something like that. Reflect the B in the Y axis. So this B is going to end up over here. So this point, I think I'll try and be a bit more accurate, is going to end up 7 centimetres over here. So this point is going to end up 7 centimetres over here. So the whole letter B is going to end up like that. 
So being able to reflect in the x or the y axis.